Our next story is is actually somewhat decent one. Of course, Cop City, we know, is awful in Atlanta. They spent now over $80 million, which is more than double the budget that they had originally put into this. The city council voted 11 to 4 to fund it and to keep moving forward with it, even though it's the, the community has outcried that they don't want it. Um, it's a big problem. So we need to stop Cop City. And there are a lot of residents and a lot of activists that are on the ground doing phenomenal work to whip up public support. And what happened this week was that there was, ah, in the, in the media award honoree section, by the way, Truthout is doing a fun drive, but in the media awards, Truthout, um, really good article this week from Mike Ludwig. Activists now have 104,000 signatures to put Stop Cop City on the ballot in 2022. Bam and Stop City. Bam and out. Yes. Worried that city officials will reject by large numbers of signatures, organizers have collected far more than required, which is exactly what you have to do every time you collect signatures. Over 100,000. Activists fighting to halt the fiercely contested police training facility in Atlanta, Georgia, known as Cop City, have collected a whopping 104,000 signatures for a citywide ballot referendum on the city's government lease for the massive $90 million project. Sorry, I thought it was only $80 million. Now it's already up to 90. Organizers called the most successful citizen-driven petition in the city of roughly 500,000 residents with a deep history of struggle for racial justice. That's 20% of the city. The broader Stop Cop City movement argues that city officials and the Atlanta police are destroying chunks of a beloved forest to build a facility and have bulldozed ahead despite fierce protests and widespread community opposition. Now, my issue is it's not just the the Weilani Forest that we are that we need to protect. We need to make sure they don't build this thing anywhere. Because all this is saying is, well, you can't build it there. And then at some point they may turn around and say, yeah, okay, well, that we may not build it there, but we're going to build it and we're going to build it here. No, I don't want you to build it at all. Atlanta voters could have the final say on whether the city leases the land for the Atlanta Public Safety Training Center, a project that became an ugly national controversy after state troopers shot and killed a young protester known as Tortuguita, RIP, as law enforcement aggressively cleared tree sitters from a block, from a floor forest blockade in January. There are also people that held a concert there in March who are still being held in uh, to this day. However, it's still up to city leaders and the Atlanta City Council to approve the signatures and to put the referendum on the ballot. That's unbelievable that they even have any say whatsoever at this point. You got 100,000 signatures. Depending on how long this process takes, the referendum could be on the ballot by this November or March of next year when Republicans will be voting in the presidential primaries. Well, we've collected over 104,000 raw signatures around the city of Atlanta from southwest to Buckhead, and the people have decided, says Barry Hooks, Cop City must be put on the ballot. So we've only got about 58,000 signatures from registered voters, which are needed to place a citizen's referendum on the ballot in Atlanta, or about 15% of the population. So they've got almost double that. However, city coalition organizers say they heard reports from inside City Hall that officials may base the requirement on the number of voters registered for the last election, including inactive voters, so they'll just raise the bar even higher to get that to... Nice. To Cut the fifth... No, it's... What? What? Yeah, that to get that 15% number, right? They'll just keep raising it. So now it's 62,000 signatures you need. So instead of submitting the 104,000 raw signatures as originally planned Monday, canvassers said they'll continue collecting signatures until a court ordered extension as they wait, uh, under a court ordered extension, as they wait for clarification from city officials on how the signatures will be counted and validated. These city officials are fucking snakes. And they're in bed with the corporations that are funding this shit. Stop Cop City activists fear city officials may attempt to invalidate large numbers of signatures with aggressive signature matching, a practice that civil rights groups have implicated in voter suppression. 
Yes, and yeah. it has been well documented that they do this bullshit, especially in Georgia. Greg Palast made a movie about it. On Monday, the Atlanta City Council was reportedly preparing to vote on a resolution to hire outside legal counsel to verify signatures, which they did. Indeed, Atlanta's interim municipal clerk, Vanessa Walden, issued a statement on Monday confirming that the city has developed a step-by-step -step process to conduct the audit of the documents, of which the signature verification process may be a critical element. In a process by some observers as onerous, each signature on the referendum petition will be matched manually, line for line, with signatures in a state voter database. Voting rights advocates are critical of signature matching, arguing that minute differences between them could be used to throw signatures out, with signatures from marginalized voters, such as those with disabilities, disproportionately impacted, of course. The ACLU has successfully filed legal challenges in multiple states where absentee ballots were wrongly discarded due to signature matching, but Walden says the process in Atlanta would be transparent. Sure. Well, we're boned. Yep. Still, the vote to stop Cop City canvassers are leaving nothing to chance and will continue collecting signatures over the next month. They're also asking for further clarification from the city about whether voters will be notified and allowed to correct or cure rejected signatures. So this is the other thing. They'll reject the signature, and they don't even tell you that they rejected it. You signed it. It's got your name on it. They don't give you the, the, the chance to appeal. There's nothing. It's just outright rejection. Fascism. In addition to the clear problems raised, there are critical questions uh, that the city has left unanswered. How will voters know if their signature is rejected? Will observers be present during the verification process? If a signature is rejected, can a voter appeal or cure the error so that they can so that their signature can be counted? I mean, they're freaking residents of the city. They should be counted. Earlier this summer, the coalition. Think, what? Go ahead. You would think. So the coalition filed a federal lawsuit earlier this summer for Walden. Um, after Walden approved a petition that required each signature supporting the referendum to be written down before a resident of Atlanta. That would have prevented residents from unincorporated DeKalb County, including residents living near the forest and police training city, from collecting signatures for the effort. They're such scumbags. They just want to restrict, restrict, restrict. They want to narrow that field and, and, and choke it as much as absolutely possible, make it as hard as possible to, to do it. To stop these guys to, from spending $90 million of our money on this bullshit. To criminalize the, the community. Because we know what, what the Atlanta community over disproportionately will go after people of color. In late July, a federal judge ruled in favor of the canvassers and against the city, allowing non-Atlanta residents to collect signatures. Good. The ranks of canvassers swelled with activists and volunteers, and events such as community bike rides were organized to collect large numbers of signatures. Of course, I'm sure the, that the city will do everything to try to impede that and to give these organizers a hard time. And shout out to them for, for putting all that together and for fighting on this. The judge also extended the deadline for submitting signatures to September 23rd, giving the canvassers more time to collect signatures in case the city attempts to invalidate them in large numbers. The city has reportedly, yep, of course, but... appealed that ruling after a motion to delay the judge's order was denied. They want to just run the clock out and give you no chance to potentially get those signatures, according to reports. What a surprise. Yeah, These motherfuckers. Course. These motherfuckers. So like, and they, they there's no repercussions for any nope. of those actions either. Like, that's what pisses us all off. Like, we can clearly see you fighting the people every no. fucking time you repercussions think. they fail upwards is what like, happens they get promoted they get I raises know. they get bonuses yeah. they get reelected. yep they get mm -hmm. fawning press coverage in the mainstream public i, I hate the word mainstream in the corporate owned controlled fascist news City officials will yep. have 50 days to validate the signatures after the petition submit, is, is submitted and what if they don't a spokesman for the Vote Stop Cop City, Vote to Stop Cop City Coalition, told Truth Out that Atlanta officials have the ability to put the re referendum on the November ballot instead of waiting for the next election in March if they choose to do so. But they're not going to do it because they know that voter turnout is much, much lower in a primary in March. 
And they would probably lose in November. Even, yep. especially, even in November 2023, you're going to have some kind of local elections. The situation in Atlanta is tense after months of activism and police repression. Remember, we had a journalist that sued Cop City also for the conditions that they were put under when they were arrested. Yep. In response to blockades. They labeled them as domestic terrorists, right? Yep. Yep. In response to blockades and acts of property destruction, police have rounded up activists and charged dozens under Georgia's vague domestic terrorism law on flimsy evidence and what activists say is an effort by local police and their allies in Georgia's Republican-controlled state government to criminalize an entire movement. This is what they do. First, they go after the extreme right. Then they go after the activist left. However... The vast majority of protests, vigils, and events held by Stop Cop City activists do not involve property destruction tactics, tactics, and activists also face felony charges for posting flyers to mailboxes and raising money for a bail fund. Yeah, well, wait a minute. The flyers to mailboxes literally was in one of the cops' neighborhoods with his face on it saying that you've got a killer cop in your neighborhood. That pushes the line. I got to, you know, even... That literally would put somebody, that would make the cops want to go after you. And yeah, I mean, look, the cops have already done that, but you want to further antagonize the cops, that's how you do it. Raising money for the bail fund was ridiculous. That they literally were disqualifying these people um, from, if they, could, they wouldn't allow the bail funds to actually be used for the activists. They wouldn't let them out if they were getting the, the funds from the bail funds. After a formal review of the evidence, Atlanta District Attorney Sherry Boston recently withdrew her office from prosecuting 42 people, oh, I didn't hear this, who were rounded, and rounded up and charged with domestic terrorism at the music concert. We definitely covered that. After an embarrassing incident for police in March, instead leaving the prosecution up to Georgia's Republican Attorney General. Ooh, he's going to be happy to throw the book at them. Vote to Stop Cop City announced on Monday that the coalition will consider upcoming opportunities for nonviolent direct action to direct the people's frustration with council's obstruction of the democratic process. If this city needs to see a demonstration of the people's commitment to this issue, we're happy to provide one. It says, come off Franklin. Speaking of Black Power Media, shout out to come off Franklin. He was on with Savvy Sabs a couple weeks ago. Watch that interview. It was outstanding. I believe he was also on with J.B. Font. He's an organizer with Community Movement Builders. This is another story that has me beyond angry because it's corruption. It is crony ca capitalism. It is funding killer cops. It is redirecting resources away from the community in a way that they definitely do not want. It's everything wrong with this country right here is what's going on with this. Funding fascism. Overfunding fascism, by the way. Because remember, it was originally supposed to cost as much as $40 million. The price tag is now up to $90 million, and they continue to say yes. Fuck these guys. Fuck these guys. Yeah. Fuck those fuck guys. I need, I need Jimmy. You, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out. That's right. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck you, Baltimore. That's right. Sorry, Colin. Oh, wait, Colin's <laughs> not in Baltimore. He's in D.C. <laughs> right? That's Justin. Justin's oh, in Baltimore. Daryl's in Baltimore. Shout out to Black in the Empire. INN member Jack, Black in the Empire, Daryl. <laughs> love him. Lo love to Daryl. Um, I know he went out. He came out to see Jimmy Dore when he was in Baltimore area, but... Yeah, fuck him with a cactus. That's right, Snow Himbo. Oh, all right. So you can Ooh. tell I'm I'm kind of fired up tonight. Um, all right. 